All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Burn the Ship. Thank you for being here, my friend. I think this is version two of, uh, it, it is, of it our is. podcast now, which I'm excited about. Thank you for coming up to the office. We have an in-person podcast with Miss Dina Preci today, um, which is cool. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah, the Saturday too. podcast is not extremely common for me. I'll tell you, the uh, the business world loves that Monday through Friday, nine mm-hmm. to five. Yeah. Um, so when you asked me, hey, can we come up here and meet on a Saturday? I was excited about that. I was like, yeah. oh, that's a little bit different. You know? <laughs> it's a little easier for us to get here on a Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because well, you're probably an hour and a half away, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and you're yeah. like the coming side of things? or mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Not far from that. Cool. Yeah, not too bad. That's not too bad. It's really not a bad, not a bad drive. No, it wasn't. It's it wasn't important to make it on a Saturday. Construction everywhere. Uh huh. It's insane. Yeah, I, and I am getting used to it. I came back from Buckhead last night at like seven o'clock, you know, eight o'clock last mm-hmm. night, and there was still um, traffic running all the way down seventy five. Yeah. So you know, it is. Uh, and it most, is a lot. and most of them um, on their cell phones. That was fun. No, yeah, the the vast majority. I would say, you know how they say like four out of five dentists. This was like four out of five cars. People were literally one guy watching a movie. Do you find yourself paying attention to that more? I I always paid attention to that just because I, I guess too because safety is so paramount in what we do mm-hmm. that you just you know you look around you and you're like, do you realize what you're you know <laughs> you're a three thousand pound bullet yeah <laughs> basically literally. you know they, they don't people don't get that part sure so you know and i'm watching them weave in and out and i'm like <laughs> so crazy. if um for anybody that doesn't remember um miss priest was a part of the escapades we I, talked about that last time i was yes we talked about the um we talked about your your driving your um drag racing drag racing yes, yes. that's the word i was looking for drag racing um give us an update Give us an update on things, man. How's life been? So we, uh, it's been, I don't remember when the last time was that we did Maybe a little over a year ago. So right around a year ago. We've, uh, we've purchased a new trailer. Well, new to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's actually an old NASCAR trailer. So if you're familiar with drag racing, as opposed to NASCAR in drag racing, our trailer goes in our pit area Mm -hmm. and that is where we work on the car in between rounds. I say we like I have a mouse in my pocket. I don't really do mm-hmm. anything. I make sandwiches. So um and drive the car. But um in NASCAR they don't do that. They just bring the trailer and take the car out and it's they're not working on it but in the garage. They actually have a garage. We don't have that. Mm-hmm. So uh my husband had to put lights on the side of it and you know do some different things to it just because it was it wasn't conducive to what we did, but the trailer is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So and there's posts on my social media of um, the renovation of the trailer, uh, redid the lounge, much to my husband's dismay. I wanted a tin ceiling in it, and it looks fabulous. But my husband was like, really? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. A tin ceiling? Um, so, you know, it's your home away from home. It's got a bathroom. Uh, we're putting a shower and a toilet in there and and uh, making things work. You know, sure. now we don't have a truck to, to trailer it yet. You know, I don't think, sometimes I think people don't understand the undertaking. You know, we got rid of our old rig um, because we weren't racing at the time and it was just a lot of money to shell out every month. So now we're regrouping. Um, and this year is going to be pretty much a regrouping year. Um, I need all new safety equipment uh, that has to all be updated. Like our helmet um, has a, they call it Snell, which is the um, your uh, safety recommendation. So they give you a year that it ends starts and ends. Mm -hmm. So mine's out this year. So we need a new helmet. I need a new, you know, fire suit, all that fun stuff. So, and there's a, there's a season to, it happens something like chronologically and you accumulate points right throughout. Well, yes, depending. Yeah. And of course, depending on what series you run, there's, there's a few different ones out there. Uh, yep. It's, uh, you know, they'll start in, let's say, March and then end in October. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So you're coming up kind of into the uh, into the heat of things. Yes. And, but what we're going to do is test the car. Mm-hmm. We're going to start out testing the car because we need it. We, My husband has done a lot of updates to the car itself, which is great. But now I need to get back in the seat. And we have no data for what we've done. So sure. we just need to, we need to get some data and get it dialed in. How long are the passes that you're making? quarter mile or half well mile? so 
the only, <laughs> the only series that right now is running quarter mile in pro mod, which mm. is what I run is NHRA. Mm -hmm. uh, and other series like Midwest Drag Racing Series, which is something that we're very interested in running, um, and um, NMCA and PDRA, they are all eighth mile. Really? They've pretty much cut just about everything down to eighth mile. And I'm and assuming it, that you prefer the quarter mile. I do. I, You know, I yeah. started in this business 20 years ago, and it quarter mile was the, the thing, standard, yeah. and eighth mile was kind of like the outlaw deal, you sure. know? And it was big down south. Um, I we're not from the south, but um, and we ran quarter mile. And I like running it out the back door. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I love that back half. But you know, it's I know they say some is in the name of safety. I mean, there's um, we had a guy yesterday that ran a five thirty nine, so five point three nine seconds in the quarter mile at 267 miles an hour. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is, that's insane. Yeah, the yeah the whole we're going to limit it to the quarter mile for safety, I don't buy because mm -hmm. it is um, maybe not equally as dangerous, but it's dangerous enough. You know, it's dangerous enough for it not to matter that much. It's It, it really doesn't matter because now all they're doing is getting, a, getting there quicker in the eighth mile. Sure. Do you know what I mean? You're just gonna you're just gonna tune it for what you need it yeah. for. Yeah. I mean, what are and, we gonna do? Start building four second cars? Pe well, people like, are people are running in pro mod. Um, people are running. They're running fifty. So three fifty yeah. three point five zero seconds for those who are not familiar. In the eighth mile, which is only six hundred and sixty feet, if you don't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of good. That's trivia. still insane. It's a good trivia question. That's still uh, insane in itself, though. Yeah. To be running that, that yeah. that's crazy. It's insane. And and it's over 200 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have guys that are close to 220 miles an hour. One are they slowing in. themselves with parachutes? We, so, yeah, with a pro mod in particular, um, you always have to hit the chutes mm -hmm. first before you hit the brakes. If you hit the skids, you're probably going to wind up on the lid. Mm -hmm. It's just how those cars are designed. Sure. And it, it's it's something that every driver is pretty much familiar with. Sure. Sure. Have you had any experience with that? You haven't wrecked one of these cars yet, have you? <laughs> I certainly have, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I have. And you can uh, find it on YouTube. Just look up Dina Parisi Crash. There's two of them. Uh, one, And it was at the same racetrack. Really? Oddly. Yes. And... Um, one, I was uh, Scotty Cannon, who's a big, big name in uh, Pro Mod, especially in drag racing, but in Pro Mod, especially. Uh, Scotty was tuning for us and um, car just it went out like 150 feet. It wasn't far. And she just she just got loose. And if you watch it, you'll see I kind of it, it went to the right and then went back to the left and I, they, we had the, what's called the Jersey wall. So a Jersey wall is not flat. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. And so as I hit the Jersey wall, I went up about five feet in the air, you know, and I was like, it was a six, you know? Mm. <laughs> and um, it, we ran, we were running two cars at the time and my husband ran the rest of the day. He went, I think to the semifinals that day, if I recall. Good God. And, you know, you just kind of suck it up, buttercup. You got it's things to it, do. Huh? Yeah, you know, as long as you're not injured. And like I said, thank God we wear uh, our safety equipment is amazing, so um, it it definitely does its job. Mm -hmm. And I guess your your sport in general has lost a couple of people this year that were kind of at the the figurehead of the the drifting and racing scene. Huh? We've, and, and we've Ken had, Block and um, yeah, well, Ken Block that was that was a huge loss, and we've had some loss in the in the pro mod ranks. Um, and for various reasons, there was crashes, um, you know, uh, in Australia as well, uh, our counterparts. So it's been, um, it has been a bit of a harrowing year and we lost a few people to, to, you know, the big C. Um, so it's, it has, we were just talking about that in the car. It's been, it's been a tough year, mm -hmm. uh, in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a scary thing when you're doing something that's so dangerous, and then people are still dealing with real world stuff. You know, it just kind of brings it back home for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. It makes it a very very real thing. For sure. But it is, um, 
you know, it is very interesting the outlook that the people that are in your 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 workplace have mm-hmm. on life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even until uh, even until now, I don't I don't think that I've experienced. I don't think I've experienced one thing that that feels what must feel like going 270 miles an hour down an eighth mile track. Yeah, that's great. You know I, what haven't, I, mean? I haven't done that either. I've yeah. been I've been in the 240s, not yeah. the 270s. Well, but that that sounds terrifying. It's uh, you know what's what's funny is it's it depends on how you look at it, of course. But I, I find it exhilarating. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love the thrill of it. And um, you know, but in the in the scheme of things, you you do never forget that it, what we do is dangerous. Sure. I mean, there's no two ways about it. We're sure. crazy. And it's been said that pro mod drivers are the most of the most insane because the cars can be so out of control um, <laughs> and so hard to handle. And I that's kind of the fun of it, I think. Sure. Um, but, you know, in the same respect, people ask me, are you afraid of the car? And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid of it. I respect it. Mm-hmm. And I remember that, you know, live to race another day. Sometimes you just got to lift. Sure. You know, and if you got to lose, it is what it is. You know, you, you want to dig in as much as you can, but you also want to be smart about it. Sure. And with, um, in, and with the pro mod series, is that something that you kind of have to like rank yourself up to? Like, did you start somewhere else or is that well, just a decision that that's where you chose to start? Well, my opinion on that is Yes. Uh, because I think we all should like anything in life. I think you should work your way up, give yourself the chance to understand where you, where you're at at the race on the racetrack, give yourself the chance to understand, uh, what to do if you get in trouble. Uh, and I've been noticing that there is a little less of that coming up in the ranks sort of thing where people are able to, for, you know, monetarily, I should say, are able to get into the game. And that's where they start. I don't necessarily recommend that. But hey, if it works for you, that's fantastic. Sure. Sure. So you're saying you can't kind of buy your way in if you have the money, if you have the resources, oh, sure. but you think there's better places. Yeah, it's just like anything. Money you think and... there's better places to start, though, as it comes to like kind of gaining some accuracy. I do, because, uh, you know, the, the other side of that is there's someone in that other lane. Mm-hmm. And I, as a driver and many drivers that I know, we don't forget that. You are probably going to, at one point or another, get into a spot where you could possibly be close to that person in the other lane. What do you do? Mm-hmm. And with these cars, the steering is uh, the steering super tight. You don't you don't want to be yanking the wheel because mm-hmm. you're gonna that's Move gonna a cause lot. a disaster. You know everything has to be done kind of minimally mm-hmm. it's very minimalist in this for for how the car is designed and uh you know you want to learn i feel like you want to learn and a little bit of a slower pace meaning not 200 miles an hour in the eighth uh you know again where you're at and about how the the people around you there there can be <laughs> that sure it can happen so. sure sure no, that makes a lot of sense. And so what with you this year, you're kind of getting back into the the sport, kind of getting mm-hmm. back into the scene, and you need all of these new things. Or you're kind of reaching out to new sponsors. You're finding new people to kind of jump on board and help out with the team as well. So Absolutely. And, and you know, that uh, something that I've never stopped, even with kind of taking the break. Sure. Um, and it wasn't a break that we wanted to take between COVID and everything else. You know, there was a little bit of a lull there. Uh, I've never stopped as far as my social media goes and my interviews and, you know, I keep myself out there. Um, it's, it's not easy because, you know, I don't have my footage that I have right now is of course from the last time I was in the car. So, uh, but I do teach people a lot about safety on my social media, uh, because I think it's super important. Um, and sometimes I can relate it to, you know, the average car. Sure. You know, seatbelts, obviously, there's that's the first thing. Uh, And so this way, I'm trying to teach people about the sport. Maybe it'll give them an interest to get into the sport because we want it to continue. Um, I want to encourage anyone, especially, you know, it's so funny. I just turned 56. So it's funny because I noticed that 
and I've never really thought about it until recently. I've noticed that men in our business can be older. Mm -hmm. But when the women are a little bit older, it's like, ooh, she's 56. Mm -hmm. And she's like daring to do that. And I'm like, the guy next to me is like almost 70. Mm -hmm. Why is it okay for him? <laughs> for me? I don't get that. So I want to encourage people my age, you know, we're, we may be older, but we're not dead. Sure. And, you know, just go out and do it, do what you want to do. Sure. And I imagine that, um, in your sport specifically, the barrier to entry makes it so that it's, it's mostly old people, like older people, like to the sport, people that have been in the sport for a while, people that know that sport well, is there a lot of exposure to like the people that have never really seen drag racing? Like, because like, I'll, I'll kind of put it into these terms, right? I play, I play pool, mm -hmm. right? I play, I play pocket billiards, right? I play mm -hmm. eight ball and nine ball, I play competitively. I love to play a tournament. I love to gamble and play for money. That sport and um, focusing for the amount of time that you have to focus in in that sport interested me, and it was something that I could play forever because I'm a basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, you know, shooting balls that stuff is is fun <laughs> it's to me. What you do, you know, yeah. absolutely. So I picked up uh, I picked up billiards when I kind of really lost the ability to play basketball because there's not as many people playing basketball my age. You know, like I get. I get. I play basketball once at least every Sunday. I try to play again throughout the week, mm -hmm. and once a year, maybe twice a year, I get in a good showcase league for you know eight or twelve weeks. You know, and, and there's that's no, about, how, how old are you? I'm 26. I just turned 26. And there's no le like adult leagues. Oh, there there are some adult leagues, but not at the level that I played basketball mm. at. You know what I mean? Now there's gotcha. a couple. Um, the one that I play in specifically in Cartersville is a lot of. Uh, like overseas pros or mm. old um, old collegiate guys that play at a really really high level, but um, pool specifically has felt this vast growth in player base because of social media, mm -hmm. because everyone films themselves posting trick shots or making crazy um, shots and matches or. There's account after account after account dedicated to watching pros hit crazy shots and matches and stuff mm. like that. So, like, social media made that very popular. You know, it mm. kind of did the same thing with bowling. Um, you know, it's it's done a lot. A lot of sports have really found that, or, you know, poker has done it as mm -hmm. well. People seeing a lot of pokers. Yes. Has drag racing experienced that same thing? You know, I'm not quite sure. I, um... We have some of, our, you know, my drag racing counterparts are so great at social media. Uh, my one of my aims is to do exactly what you're saying is for people who are not drag racing or not, not drag racing, come from a drag racing family or don't know anything about the sport. Those are the people I want to encourage to watch. Sure. And it's funny because being formerly being a professional figure skater, a lot of my friends that I used to skate with have become drag racing fans. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we never thought we would like something like that. And they love it. You know, I always, it, it is very much like we call, if you're, you know, if you wiggle going down the track, they call it skating. And, you know, I, I equate, you know, like track prep to the Zamboni mm -hmm. <laughs> and skating, yeah. you know, but I want to encourage people that don't know anything about the sport to take a shot and, and look at it because we, our fans, our fans are amazing. And the fact that fans can go into the pit area, it's not like NASCAR and it's not a knock to NASCAR. We're just a different format. In NASCAR, you need like a specific ticket to be able to go back in the garage. Yep. And I think there's only, you can only do that before the race and mm -hmm. you can't do it during the race. Yeah. So um, in drag racing, every ticket is a pit pass. Right. So all the fans, they get to come back. They get to talk with us many times. They get to uh, look at the cars, ask questions. And that's a great thing for our marketing partners too. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have a sponsor. Um, Get that and, real real organic interaction. Yeah, they're up, up close and personal, and they can ask questions about products mm -hmm. or whatever we have going on. And it does. It does make it, it – the connection definitely makes a difference, I feel like. Yeah, that um, that's a big thing in Supercross 
too, mm-hmm. where like ninety five percent of the advertising that happens on in Supercross is through the pit pass mm-hmm. because you go back there and you literally interact with people's sponsors. Their sponsors are at their booth. If you want to go meet, you know, James Stewart, all of his sponsors are there with him. Mm-hmm. You know, and then. The other five percent is what's happening on the on the kit, you know, on the actual mm-hmm. rider's kit. So but um that is really it's really, really unique. The sport and the space that you play in is very, very unique. But the uh yeah, the the pit pass is definitely a, a super cross thing specialty. Yeah. That and, and drag racing both have that very, very in common where the people that are are funding the venture, the only way for them to, for it to be profitable is to be very, very front and center for the people that go experience that face to face. You know, it, it there and maybe that that uniquely is maybe a little different to your your sport as well, is that the um supercross guys are not good at social media at all oh. <laughs> for the most part. I, now I'm their, gonna have to look. Their I... their social media happens very organically because it's cool stuff. It's yeah. literally just like the stuff I was talking about in mm-hmm. pool. It's um it's crazy hole shots or like Travis Pastrana roasting mm-hmm. somebody on a five hundred when everybody's racing four fifties and in um slalom races. Like they're they have that same type of experience. So it's not very valuable for them to have a huge social media impact personally, yeah. unless you're Travis Pastrana. You and know. and Travis he did a little bit of a crossover. He came over into the drag mm-hmm. racing realm there for a bit. And, yeah. You know, uh, and he was good at it. Made some test passes. Yeah. Yeah, he was actually good at it. The the um but that guy's so talented on a bike he that is. he needs to stay there forever he is he is insane on that bike but that is very very unique the uh the experience that you guys have where you have to Mm -hmm. find relationships with basically corporate sponsors Mm -hmm. and then they have to stand there and represent their brand side by side with you standing there and representing your Mm -hmm. brand as well is very very unique how many people are in the the pro mod classification like how many people do you actually race against It, it could be anywhere from 16 you know, a 16 car race, just depending on the series. And it works like a tournament style. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you'll go out uh, for your qualifiers. You Usually there's like three or four. Uh, and then there's a ladder. And so if it's a 16 car field, let's say, it's one versus 16, mm-hmm. 15 versus two, and so on and so forth uh, until you, you know, come down to a winner. And then if in your in your mind, mm-hmm. how much of your success is car related and how much of it is you related? That that's a really good question. I'm probably going to say it's I want to say like 60 40. 60 to, to the 60, car. 60 40 me. Oh, 60 to 40 you. 40 to the car. Because I feel like what happens and I with if you're talking mar- marketing partnership, I feel like what happens is the race is almost the last piece of the puzzle, like we sure. were just saying. And my my forte in particular is creating relationships with my followers and my fans online. And it does make a big difference, again, for my marketing partners. So, you know, just having a decal on the car, it's great, but it's uh, the decal is not going to do anything. Sure. So uh, yeah, I feel like, there. yeah, so I feel like the, the push from me and, and we really only deal with companies that will stand behind. We had years ago, we ran two cars. It was my husband and myself and they were military themed and cause pro mods are known to be kind of wild and crazy. Sure. Um, now they're a little more like mine's a solid color. I'm, I'm hoping to change that actually, but, um, They've always been wild and crazy. So we had this military theme and we were uh, negotiating with a company for sponsorship and it was a decent sponsorship. And they told us that we would have to wipe all of the military scheme off of both cars. And I was like, and we also work with military um, charities. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, but that's part of what we do. It's part of who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, we're very proud of our military. We're very proud of the fact that we get to do what we do because they do what they do. Mm-hmm. And their sacrifice is immense. So, and what's a better way to show that than at 240 miles an hour, right? And they said, no, it, it just, it doesn't align with with 
us. And I was like, you're an American company. Yeah, how? What's not to align? How? So we, we walked away. Mm-hmm. I, and <laughs> I mean, you know, that's hard because it was, it was, it was a good amount of money, but the the flip side of that was I wasn't willing to leave my integrity on yeah, the table. Not be who you are. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, it's really it's funny too that we we can joke about those things like, Oh, if you give me the sponsorship and the money and you're making the wheels go around, I'll paint it I'll paint it whatever you want until mm-hmm. you actually kinda of have that opportunity to yeah. Yeah. To change I mean, what we, it is you do and, and who you are and bend it to something else. And we could have done something to incorporate. I get that it was, you know, a very flashy theme and whatnot, but we, we could have done what we needed to incorporate. We happen to have paint at the time. We could have, you know, half wrapped it or whatever to, to make it work. But and that's what where the popularity of those cars was too. You know, the they were people came because they wanted to see the detail. They wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, um, my 63 Corvette had, uh, it was like Afghanistan based on one side, Humvees and that kind of thing. The other side was Vietnam Mm -hmm. and it had a Vietnam wall on the back that had all fictitious names except for two. That was, uh, friends of mine's dads. And, um, it became a very emotional thing for people too, because I, we put so much work into that paint scheme. Yeah, they could see it. And I said, well, why would you want to not have that? just you know it that created that creates a connection too so now i'm going to lose that connection because i'm going to forfeit it for money and i just couldn't do it sure no yeah that makes sense that makes sense and and i'm assuming that creating that memorable impression with your car is a huge part of adding to your fan base when you're talking about being there on a saturday or a sunday or Whenever you guys are racing, you're you're waking up and the fans are there and they're early and mm-hmm. the, you know it's March and everybody's got a hoodie on and you've eaten a, a McGriddle and your right. stomach's hurting. You're going <laughs> exactly. to the pit to see all the cars and you know you definitely don't want the least memorable one. You right. know it's going to make it really hard. Right, and now we have uh, the back deck of my car. So for those who don't know, my car's name is Stella. Uh, it's a 2013, it's considered Cadillac CTSB because mm-hmm. every Italian girl from New York needs a yeah. 3,000 horsepower yeah. Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the back deck still has a uh, fallen soldier, mm. um, you know, never service, sacrifice, never forget. Um, that will be on all of our cars and has been no matter what the scheme is. Sure. Uh, and she's red. Um, my grandmother. The car is named after my grandma, who Stella, and uh, she was a redhead for the mm. longest time, and that's where the red came in. And um, and people, I hear them in the pit area, you know, the the ones who are old enough to know Stella. Like mm-hmm. it's just hilarious. And so she does. She has her own. She has her own personality. She has her own persona. You know, I'm spicy meatball. She's Stella, and yeah. you know, it's it's a good combination. So how did um. How did how did you get a Cadillac CTSV to it's, three thousand horsepower? It's well, it's not so. Pro mods are not traditional vehicles. Uh, they are carbon fiber or um, yeah, they're lightened and well, they're so it's a, a ton of power. it's a chassis, mm-hmm. uh, a purpose built chassis, and then a carbon fiber or fiberglass body. Mm-hmm. And um, the Cadillac hadn't been out yet. We had. Um, two Corvettes, 63 was mine, 53 was my husband's. We sold both of those to field this car because we got a phone call from the builder. His name was Rob Rob Mathias. And Rob said to my husband, he goes, hey, we're creating a a Cadillac CTSV body, he said. And the first person that came to my mind was your wife. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's kind of how that came about. So we got rid of two cars to... um, to get the one, and then we won the championship in 2015, which was kind of cool. And and this is a Cadillac, so I'm a, I'm you're running the same motor from the Corvette. Yeah, it's pretty much the, the same. LS7 it's, it's a Hemi. Seven. It's a Hemi. Oh, it's a Hemi. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's a 526 Hemi. Wow. Uh, with a 1471 supercharger on the top. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're you got fun. a big old scoop in your hood. Is it, well, so it's you, you have cut the, it out. You have the big, yeah, there's a, there's yeah, a whole, it. so That's you have awesome. to remember everything is all purpose built. So, oh, sure. Yeah. So the nose 
uh, unlike a funny car where the whole body comes up, mm-hmm. except for one friend of mine, his the whole body comes off of his car. It's hilarious. I love it. Uh, <laughs> But, but um, ours, the nose comes off. So when they need to work on, when we come back to the pit so area. So basically your front clip and your, mm-hmm, your hood and all those the, things is one The piece. nose, just the nose comes right off. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Anything of the front of your hood or your fenders and all those things. Right? It's all one piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is nice. So That's pretty cool. It takes two guys. They just pull that right off and then, um, you know, they can work. We don't do teardowns like the nitro guys do sure. between rounds, you know, they're just pretty much looking everything over and, uh, you know, checking the valves and that kind of thing, but not doing, not well, you complete. have to. And, and I mean, one, one hung valve though is like, yeah, I mean, we create had... so much heat and pressure in those yeah. like funny cars, stuff yeah. like that. You can literally melt the top of a yeah, block I mean, or we... blow a gasket or be out between rounds. We've come back and been like, what happened? Oh yeah. Oh, it snapped the lash cap. Like just yeah. stupid things. I know. Um, so I run a converter mm-hmm. and uh, it's a Bruno with a Lanco three speed. So um, now normally when we started this gig, you know, 20 years ago, when we ran NHRA, there was a rule. If you didn't run a clutch, which we were the minority then, mostly almost everybody runs a converter now. We were the minority then. Running and everybody a converter. was still running a pure clutch at that and, point. Yeah, and um, but the rule was when we ran NHRA Get Screened America, Roger Burgess had brought uh, Pro Mod back to NHRA, and uh, the rule at the time was you could run a converter, but you had to leave off a clutch pedal, because most people who ran converters, let's say like in the sportsman ranks, they left off of a button Mm -hmm. and they were like, no, no, that's sport. You cannot leave off a button. You have to leave off a clutch pedal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I still have the clutch pedal in my car. I refuse to take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to leave off a button. I like the I like the kind of the, a real racing. Not necessarily a foot swap, but yeah, I like it's real racing. Yeah, it's just a transition because yeah. like what's happening for people that don't know is you're holding the clutch, you're finding the correct RPMs for your car to So no, get... we we don't do that in we actually don't do that with a converter. It's it's a it's No, preset. I mean just with a pure clutch. Oh, right, yeah, just like your clutch. your traditional mm-hmm. clutch. What what you're what you're experiencing is finding the balance between your transmission mm-hmm. and your engine and making those things talk at the same speed and then yes. giving it all the power. Mm-hmm. It, and then explain the difference in what a converter does and what like a push button does or like a launch right. control does that so, changes the sport. So our RPM is basically preset. It's like forty five hundred, I think. Um, that's none of my business. I just have to drive the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, so what we do is it's what they call a trans brake. Mm-hmm. So my trans brake is my clutch pedal. Mm-hmm. And so I will hit the trans brake, hit the throttle. My hand is on the brake. I actually have a brake, a foot brake pedal, but I don't really use it that much. Yeah. Uh, and... From what I understand, the foot brake pedals. I don't rarely, really, rarely ever use. Uh, yeah, I don't really use it that much. Most cars don't even have one. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not even sure why I have one, but I do. Um, and so you can drive it out on the street if you ever need to. <laughs> I wish. <yeah>. I wish. <laughs> you can drive it to I wish if you need I had to. more opportunity to drive it. <laughs> It'd cost me three hundred dollars yeah, to go, well, to go of anywhere. A mile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I hit the uh, the clutch or the trans brake. Uh, go full throttle, because now. In, in essence, basically, like your first and reverse is locked. So the car's not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, I have the handbrake held. And I when the tree comes down, I release off of the clutch and the handbrake at the same time. And, of course, stay on mm-hmm. the throttle. You don't want to miss out on that part. Uh, and then going down the racetrack, I mean, I have a, a, <laughs> I have a shift light. Mm-hmm big yellow light that blares and says shift the car so i shift second third and then you know there's a shutdown process and how far are you into the pass when you get to third uh you're pretty much mm, you're going to third for the last 150 feet yeah maybe about yeah yeah that's what i figured that's pretty unique though that still has got to be very adrenaline and how many how many passes do you make in a day well, it if you're qualifying the same day and you're going to so the finals, normally you'll qualify like uh, there's a race running right now, uh, and they did two qualifiers yesterday. They'll do 
two more qualifiers today and maybe first round of eliminations this evening. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. And then finish the race tomorrow. Cool. So you're doing two, three passes a day. It just depends on, you know, where they're at in the schedule. Sure. Sure. And the best of the best. How how many times are the the best like how many passes do you think that those guys have made in the cars that they're driving? How often do they pass? Do they do they test cars? Because I'm assuming there's a balance between like I can go play as much pool as I want right now. Mm-hmm. Like I can leave here and go play unlimited yeah. pool. Yeah, we have much. we have a bit. We have to schedule to yeah for sure to go testing, and we do. And there's um, stress that it adds to the car. You know, like they're they're you have a certain amount of you know, finite mm-hmm. resources in that yeah. car where it's going to do what you ask it to so many times. Yeah. So, And and I, I'm assuming that tables are different maybe in different places that you go, sure. right? Like the mm-hmm. felt is thicker, so the oh, ball certainly, goes yeah. slower or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm guessing. Uh, you know, and it's the same, you know, track conditions, they vary, you know, where is it at sea level? And and everything is checked. You know, they they're looking at the weather, they're going out checking the track condition. What's the temperature of the track? And they're tuning from that. Mm. So everywhere you go is different. And that's the importance of data. Because you want to have data from these different racetracks that you go to. The weather, you're hoping that the weather is basically the same. You know, if you're going there at the same time of year, maybe. Sure. You, know? you can and get then, it something pretty And then so you have your data from there and you can work off of that. Sure. No, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And so tell me, um, kind of as we, you know, I, I have learned that you can only talk for so long on the old podcast for people to still listen, but what are you guys <laughs> looking for right now? Like what type of relationships are you guys looking to make in the court corporate sponsorship that kind of furthers your purpose in the racing scene? Well, you know, for me, like I said, I'm 56. Uh, I definitely want some companies that are, um, geared towards people that are more my age would be fantastic sure. uh, because our, our our demographic too of people that are watching is pretty vast so uh, I do think that you know someone who's more my age is might be apt to you know to kind of contact with that I have I have someone that I have no idea how you guys are going to be able to work together. <laughs> But I know you will be. This is this. I'll give you. I'll give you one one characteristic of my good friend here, Andrea. Right? She drives a Lexus RCF mm, nice. race car, like everywhere. I That's love it. that is what she prefers to drive, and she has other options. And she drives her RCF no matter what. So, my kind of girl. Um, yeah, she's awesome. She. <laughs> I actually the first time I had ever met her. Right, and she is. Um, she owns a web development company. She owns. She is um, very developed in the business world for sure. She, she's got a lot of stuff going on in the business world, right? And the first time that I ever met her was regarding some software stuff, some integration-related stuff. Um, and we talked and we met up at Rays on the River and, and we chilled and, you know, we, we really actually got a, got a really good strong start to a relationship off when we first met, you know, it's like sometimes you meet people when you go straight into the business side of things Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the conversation not really dry, but her and I were just talking, talking, talking. It was great, you know, and she had just went to. Um, you know, the Porsche experience in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. Yes. there's the BMW experiences in North Carolina, I think. Um, and so they do a little bit different than like what the Porsche experience does. Right. They, she did like slalom racing. She did like wet track laps and got to like actually throw a 360 on the track. Um, she got to do like time courses all in these like, you know, really nice BMWs, BMWs, these I series and these 500 series BMWs, like super, super fast cars. And, um, that I had just met her just fresh out of that. And she has videos of her doing all of these different things, oh, riding fine. with the pro drivers, you know, and um, that, that was really, really cool. And uh, so she, she will speak your language and she <laughs> knows marketing um, and she knows corporate sponsorship really, really well. And I'm, I'm assuming that she probably has something that you can work with her on or that uh, she knows some people that you can talk to. That's That'd kind of be right cool. Up your alley. Thank you. Yeah, I absolutely. It. I would love to make the introduction because I think that you guys are going to love each other because I love her <laughs> so much. She's great. Um, if you're listening to this, you're, you're awesome, Andrea. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's really, really cool. I mean, I think, I think what you do is really, really cool. I know we have some people that we can connect you with. 
Um, we'll take this content, we'll chop it up, we'll give it to you and let you fuel the fire with it because I think you speak very passionately about what it is that Thank you do. Thank you. I am very passionate about what And it I is do. always refreshing to talk to you about it. It's a, Every single time we've ever talked has been refreshing and exciting and it makes me want to go do something cool. You know? Thank you. So, I appreciate that. That's that's my goal. My goal yeah, is, no it doesn't, you know, it's funny is people are like, well, do you, do you want everyone to drive a race car? And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. You know, I have people who love the sport and they're like, sure. well, I don't really want to drive a car. And I'm like, that's cool. Do you like computers? Oh, I'm great at computers. Awesome. That's because a huge we, portion of what it is that you We use computers do. in the car. I have no idea how to... I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Mm -hmm. My husband will tell you, I'm like, no, thank you. Not for me. But um, there are so many facets to what we do for people who love the sport to be able to get involved. And even like the marketing side, you know, helping teams with marketing sure. or different things like that. Uh, my biggest thing is to I want to I want to teach my fellow drivers how to do an interview. Really? Cuz I watch and You mean give you mean media train them a little. Yeah, because I watch <laughs> some of them and I love them to death, but they're the camera comes on and they're it's a like real barrier. terrified. They're either terrified or they're they're speaking, you know, car ease. Mhm. Mm and you know it's not dumbing it down but we do want to we want to make it palpable for everybody yeah so that you can have a huge the, fan base yeah like that's what i just talked to a guy that um was playing pool as well and he does interviews and like he, he absolutely could play pool professionally right but the um the allure of playing pool professionally is not what you would perceive it to be because the money in pool is not playing professionally weirdly enough mm. it is playing big money games with high level players you know what i mm -hmm. mean like you can go and and gamble in new york we call that sharking you know yeah, right? oh, i'm very familiar <laughs> i have a pool i actually have a shirt that gives you the definition of what a pool shark there is you go. a pool shark is someone that uh can beat you at pool because they see the table a way that you literally don't understand mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same way in your in your sport as well as that you see the things that are going on around you in a way that normal people that perceive it would not understand it. And to, um, but I want to be, I want them to be able to understand. Exactly. Somewhat. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. You have to dumb it down just because, and, and this is, this is the point that I was making. This guy said, uh, when pool is producing multi-million dollar athletes, I'll play pool professionally, but until then I will not. Because mm -hmm. why would I go get famous for being really, really good at pool and then never be able to play for money again, right? That, without dumbing it down and mm -hmm. a little media training a and sense. a little making it palpable and a little being a character for people to fall in love mm -hmm. with and all of those things and putting them together in a really fine package, it is hard to portray the human side of what it is that you do. Yeah, It really is. Yeah. It's hard to... It's hard to explain why it's so adrenalizing right. to pass an eighth of a mile down the track at 190 miles an hour. You know what I mean? Right. 200 miles an hour. But in essence, the, the, the theory behind kind of some sort of marketing, you have to remember I came from mm -hmm. a professional ice show, right? Mm -hmm. And we played characters and we were characters. The highest level of production, we, by the way. We were characters. <laughs> and uh, But it, they honed my skills to learn... And this was way, way <laughs> <laughs> before the age of social media. So we were boots on the ground. You sure. know what I'm saying? But now it's it's the same theory, right? But now it's jacked up mm -hmm. with everything that's that's kind of going on around it. Sure. And again, it's people will are more attracted to person to person than they are to an item like a race car they love the race car but they want that connection to say sure oh my god yeah that's the girl that drives that cadillac yeah okay you don't remember my name fine but you're they'll remember stella mm -hmm. they they may not necessarily remember your name but they're connecting with you they're making that connection that's what i want i want mm -hmm. them to feel like i want them to feel like they're part of it which is why i let kids sit in the race car a lot who does that really really well in your sport right now there's oh there's definitely um a few people that do um who would you say is like the most popular like racer at your level because I'm, I'm interested yeah, in, yeah in i want to look them up let's see well i mean scotty was scotty was a huge name um scotty cannon 
Um, and he's saying that he's, you know, coming back into it. Um, but there's quite a few. Oh, I don't have the name. There's quite a few different players. I don't players. have the keyboard. Um, <laughs> keyboard oh, over right. there. <laughs> there's quite a few different um, players. I'm trying to think. With some decent social media following and like a good understanding I'm just of even putting thinking, out I'm just even thinking about the, the person. But, um, you know, and some of the ones that have a little bit more backing behind them, they're able to do like cool produce stuff. You know, like um, there's a guy, his name is Stevie Fast Jackson. Stevie, a, he's a, uh, a name. Mm-hmm. a well-known name and he does a great social media he's got a great personality he's a lot of fun um you know and i am willing to kind of work both sides too sure. like i worked for uh it was uh, a um it's called flow racing mm-hmm. so they have racing online you can watch you pay your subscription for the year and mm-hmm. you watch racing online and I actually went and did the interview. So I've watched I wasn't some flow racing. racing. I watched dirt track racing. Yeah, flow, flow racing. racing. They have a lot of good stuff, mm-hmm. actually. I'm very interested in the dirt track racing world. Yeah, and that's, that's something I've been I've personally. been trying to kind of get watch more. The way those cars are shaped so is just so I know, crazy. It's, it's yeah. insane. It's just like they know they're never going to slide. It's insane. You know but that they thing. Do. That, yeah, they do. That kid that the, I don't know his name, the 16 year old yeah. at the Chili Bowl. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw it. Dude took a header. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. I, mean, I hope he's okay. I don't know what the. No, that dirt track racing is insane. It's insane. No, it is. It's, it's insane. insane. I mean, we've had. Some what you insane... do is crazy, though. I know, but I feel like they they get. There's a little more activity in that. And there's a little more, it's like just a lot of moving pieces. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you, you kind of have to take your life, you know, like throw a good fast and furious quote out there. You have to take your life like a quarter mile at a time. And those guys are like, all right, today we're shooting up for a 200 mile <laughs> dirt track race that we're yeah. running wide open nonstop. I have a hard time with that fast and furious thing though, because they shift the car like 85 oh, times. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Who shifts the car? That doesn't happen. In their yeah, life. nobody. On. Yeah, and then they um, I remember too that like the the cars just keep getting crazier and car- and crazier, right? They're yeah. like, oh, this car is so fast and so powerful that when they when it takes off from the line, it twists the frame. I'm like. <laughs> No. no, it doesn't. <laughs> I promise you, it doesn't. And now, now they'll now they'll actually just attach a car to a helicopter and fly it right across the screen for you. Now, Fast and Furious has oh. lost its pizzazz. Yeah, I, it I'm, definitely not, has. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan. Give me some Ricky Bobby any day. You really? Though? Yeah. Oh my god, I love You're that movie so Knights, much. Yeah. I love that movie so much. So when when do you start racing? Well, I, like I said, we are uh, we have to do some equipment upgrades. Uh, we're working on that. And then as soon as we start testing, we will, uh, I'll be out there and of course on social sure. media and letting people know, um, maybe not where we are testing, but you know, just, uh, let people know. So it's not that we don't want people, I would always invite people to come to a testing, but since we've been, we have so much work to do. Sure. I just don't, I just can't do we'll the distraction. Around, just, yeah. yeah. We can't do the distraction just yet, but, um, does, but we will. Does anyone make passes with people in the car? No, well, we don't have um, a I second. I figured you wouldn't have a seat. We don't have a second seat. Now, yeah. Are there people that do that, though? Uh, there is. There's really? um, Doug Foley does uh, that. I, he has, I, I like, am familiar with Doug Foley. Doug, yeah, so enough. Doug has, um, he has a two-seater car. Really? And then they do, they take, uh, they've done it at NHRA events. Yeah, yeah, you pay, go sit in the in the second seat of the car. It's a great experience for somebody who wants to be able to experience going down the racetrack but not be the one in control of the car. I would be interested in, um, first of all, I would be interested in something really well-produced-wise, podcast-wise. I would be interested is when you when you get your bearings together mm-hmm. of us coming out and making because we have obviously Soup Sandwich is our other podcast brand where we are a little just it's just not as business related you know what I mean mm-hmm. we're out and about having fun like with the other day we did a video where we we filmed us doing like bar scam like bar tricks for people and winning <laughs> drinks from people so I love it. <laughs> we have a lot of fun with stuff like that but. Um, you know, I raise you a very well produced video idea there because I know that we could come up with something there. I would love to be able to take a pass um, down the racetrack at at some point, whatever event that may be. I would I would love to um, to pursue that idea because we have a couple of other co hosts that I know would be absolutely terrified of that idea. 
Uh, but yeah, we can definitely come out there and make some yeah, make some content awesome. as you guys are, are kind of getting back in the swing of things. You've tested the car and all yeah. those things because, uh, you know, that stuff's new to us. We have a video of us trying to ride a horse, and I think it's every single one of ours besides my first try at riding a horse. And um, that was probably the funniest the funniest shit <laughs> I've ever A friend of mine has a horse life. and she tried to get me to ride. I was like, no, thank you, ma'am. She's like, but your car is 3,000 horsepower. You're not going to get a horse? I said, no, thank yeah. you, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, no. No, thank you. No, horses are are um No. You know like the car, you just turn it on and it like does. Yeah, I have more I feel like I have more control over the car It does. Than the, it just does what you tell it to do. You know, and sometimes you might tell it to do the wrong thing and it might cost you, you know, whatever, a left right. front fender mm-hmm. into the old yep. wall here, but uh no, that horse thinks for itself. Mm, no, that horse sometimes can be like, I don't want this gentleman on my back anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get him off my back and just throw you 12 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. One horsepower is plenty. I went the last, the last time I went horseback riding, we were in, um, it was when I skated for ice capades. So it was 100 years ago. But <laughs> um, I, I said to the lady, I'm like, I want the oldest, most close to dead horse you have. Yeah. <laughs> because, and I think she gave me the poor horse had like dementia or something. Because he just kept, there, all the other horses were following and mine's like, wondering. Like, yeah. yeah. And it was, there was this, like canyon thing and water and i was like i'm gonna die i'm mm. gonna die on a horse no literally horses are are insane so yeah, yeah no i i raise you one one very well produced video especially awesome. if you have an idea for a video something that would be good for you guys that would be entertaining for i us. do actually we would uh yeah let's circle back on that um let's touch base with my production team next week i'm even more than happy to connect with you on our production call that we have every week um but I would love to produce something like that for you because I think be it would awesome. be really cool yeah. for both of us. And just uh, see it for myself. But, man, I, I, I hope the best for you. I think that um, the skills that you have in creating relationships and pursuing opportunities like this is so unique for what it is that you do that I have zero doubt that you're going to be fine in you. Uh, you know, creating those relationships and finding what you need. So uh, keep tackling that to-do list. Thank and you. then um, let I us am. come out there and kind of shine the spotlight yeah, on it. Yeah, you guys can come to the at. shop anytime you want. Come and check everything out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that'd, that'd we be would be down fun. for that. Yeah, yeah we would be down in. for that. So, because I'm over that way all the time. I'm in Buckhead or I'm in Cumberland. Where is that? Yeah, up near Helen. Really? Yeah. So, what's that? There. Two and a half hours from here, maybe? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Maybe three hours? Probably two, two hours, at least two hours. Yeah, we could do that easy. So, we could do that easy for <laughs> sure. No, that interests me. Um, but yeah, I will connect you with my friend. Let me know about that video idea. We'll do it, whether yeah, it's at your awesome. shop or at the track or whatever that may be. And then um, I'll drum this up. I'll make it look really nice. I'll cut you some clips out, and then you use it to, uh, to fuel the it. fire. Thank you, you so much. You I want. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, have. I appreciate you being in the in the office. Thank you so much for having it me back. It is refreshing. And it was yeah. nice to be uh, on, on scene. Yeah. I like it, it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. We missed it. So um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and then uh, we'll be back again soon. Thanks. All right. We are free. That was awesome. We are free.